I'm very well. Thank so, you. So good to see you. You know, being a, a longtime fan of music and operating globally, I know you've been holding it down down under. Mm -hmm. You know, how did you get started in the music business? Um, March 14, 1964, I ran a dance from the cycling club I used to race with, and uh, they need to raise some money, so I said, let's run a dance. And we ran the dance, made some money, and that was it. You got hooked, huh? My life was... One more bands? That was it. Now, you were primarily, obviously, working with local acts at the time. In when, Tasmania. When, when did it become I national moved, acts? Oh, I moved to Melbourne uh, in about 66, and uh, I worked in Melbourne for a while, and uh, with a lot of big Australian bands, and mm -hmm. I moved to Sydney in 71, and I worked, my, uh, the first international band I ever worked with, believe it or not, was an English guy called Gary Glitter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> rock and <laughs> yeah. roll part two. Man. Yeah, yeah, rock and roll part three and four. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I, I then started working as a tour director with um, acts like ABBA and David Bowie and mm -hmm. Linda Ronstadt and all those so acts. You said the reputation that you Yeah, get and that then we... Now, how many markets would you do in Australia? That well, in Australia, even today, there were... There's five cities, Brisbane, Adelaide, Melbourne, Perth and Sydney. Yeah. And in New Zealand, Auckland and um, Wellington and places. So, okay. you know, in those days the acts had come in for a month. These days they come in for eight, nine days. It's all about e economy and sure. economics of travelling. and mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's changed a lot. Wow. Now, obviously, we've seen the the rise of so many great, you know, Australian bands that have hit our shore and gone global with ACDC and NXS and the Night Oil and, and all that. Got EA and now Lord. Oh, yeah. and I mean, it goes yeah, on and on. Yeah, yeah. What, uh, was it always the dream of the, the artist to get out yeah, well, you know, America and England? When Michael Ganinski and I started in this business, uh, you know, we had a list of things we wanted to achieve. And, uh, the only one I haven't achieved is to have a number one record in America. And I think with this current crop of young acts that we're looking after, we've got a pretty good shot. Yeah, you know, we've got Lime Cordial out on our own label. We've got the Griswolds with Wind Up Records out in New York. They just finished their album in LA. We've got this band from Brisbane called Shepherd, who've been here three or four times. We've just done a big deal with them. They were the biggest indie band in Australia last year, double platinum fourth most played band on radio. They've got quite a fan following in Portland, New York, LA. So we've got a lot going on. I mean, this northern summer, we've got three young Aussie bands with product working England, Europe and the US, so it's pretty exciting. Now, what was the first act that came from Australia that went global that you were involved in? Um, I, I managed the church. Yeah. who had a monster hit called in, Under the Milky Way at Night. Sure. I actually... Came out on Arista here, right? Yeah, I actually uh, resigned as their manager six weeks before it became a hit. <laughs> that was fucking well judged. Sure. And I did all the ACDC shows back in the 70s yeah. when they first started. It must have been exciting to see... Well, it was very, I was very proud when we brought them home three years ago and they played two and a half years ago. They played to three quarters of a million people in a country of 22 million. It was pretty exciting. So it was out in a big field, big outdoor. Festival. Oh, big, big stadiums, big Olympic stadiums, stadiums and okay. stuff. But they could, if they had a stay, they could have played to a million easy. Right, sold out. So that was very exciting to be involved back in '72 when they first started, and then to, yeah, very exciting. Sure, yeah. sure. Now, of the big American or the uh, British acts coming through. Who were some of your favourites? Any, any stories? Well, we, like we did, uh, 12 years ago, we brought Coldplay out and played two 200 seater clubs. And mm. 18 months ago, we played um, 10 stadium shows. Mm. So that's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked with Bob Dylan since 86. Mm. Worked with Elton John for 35 years. Uh, John Mayer, we brought him in a few years ago and played small rooms. And he's back next month playing 10,000 seaters. Mm. So we really enjoy our radio head was the same. Mm -hmm. Robbie Williams, we just sold 100,000 tickets for September this year. It's all about finding, getting involved with little bands yes. and helping them become big bands. Sure. That's now what we do. I promotions in LA when you two came through and the first show was for 600 people, which is now a church in yeah. Reseda. 
but the second show they played for 12 people in Anaheim. They later, of course, broke the record at Anaheim, Anaheim yeah. Stadium and yeah. the Rose Bowl and all that, but yeah. 12 people. Within a year and a half, they stole the show at the US Festival. And yeah, well, that's what happens. History. I mean, I, I toured the police and Sting for many, many years. And, um, you know, one of the great... To the stadiums. Well, one of the great stories was turning up in Boston one night in the middle of the fucking snowstorm and playing to 12 people and <laughs> and really having a great time and getting them 12 people really involved and yeah. one of the 12 people happened to be um, the one of the most powerful program managers in the, on the eastern seaboard and um, two weeks later Roxanne was on every radio station on the east you coast of America. Who's in the crowd. Well that's it and I tell these kids all the time it doesn't matter if there's no. 10 or 10,000. What I said, Bono and Edge played to yeah. those 12 like that's what it's all about. There. That's what it's all about. You're there, why yeah. not give it that's your it. all? That's you know? it. Now, yeah. you've obviously seen the evolution of the concert business, it's become really big business now. Seem to be a lot more, you know, whatever you call it mm. in, the, in the early days. Ticket you prices can call it a out. lot of things, <laughs> right? There <man. laughs> was a little wing in it, a little improvisation. Uh, bands were probably lucky to make a profit on some tours. Now, it just seems like. The biggest acts are just killing it with the merchandising and the tickets. Yeah, well, they make a lot of money out of merch. I mean, some of the guarantees and some of the fees that are being paid to some of these acts are fucking out of control. Yeah. And the ticket prices are a major problem. Yeah. And this secondary ticketing stuff is right. bullshit. Yeah, it's out of control. It's not pretty, but. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's. it's we, it, we do it a little differently in Australia. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Now, you're obviously you've kept your love for the music. You got the new label out in America. You're 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 bullish on breaking new artists. What keeps you inspired? Oh, I just just you know being part of it. And I mean, obviously, um, I started Chug Entertainment in 2000 because Frontier, which I created with Michael Gudinski back in '79, they weren't really interested in little bands, and they weren't they weren't embracing the internet. And I saw in the internet something mm -hmm. that was going to really change everything, mm -hmm. which it has. and So that's really excited me. And, yeah. and the fact that, you know, um, we can make a record for 20,000 bucks and a video for 5,000 bucks yeah. and bring yeah. a band to America, employ yeah. great radio pluggers and publicists sure. and do it all for about 60,000 fucking dollars. Yeah. Ten years ago, it was a million bucks. No, no. So it's all exciting, and it's, yeah. you know, it's... Uh, it's the thrill of seeing talent yeah. flourish. And it's the thrill of um, selling out shows and yeah. breaking acts, and it's just fun. Yeah. Besides putting on a great show and writing great songs, what advice do you give to your artists? Well, it's all about the songs, isn't it? Of course. And it's, well, it's about being human beings and... But it's the perseverance. And, and treating the people and like you, you properly and, <laughs> and treating their fans properly and not being... I'm a fucking superstar, piss off, like a few women artists that yeah. we have seen explode and then implode very quickly. Right. There's one doing a keynote here tomorrow. Yes. She's just alienated the world. And yeah. That's just, I've seen it so often. I've seen right. acts become monsters and then through their own, through their own actions, they've destroyed their careers. So I'm very aware of that. To so stay humble, stay hungry. No well, you just got to be a human being. Yeah. Got to make so, people yeah. enjoy working. Yeah, with you. yeah. Be pleasant. And look after your fans. Yeah. Sure, they can be a pain in the ass, but you know, you just have to do it. <laughs>